All right, Divine Masculine, what's going on? How do you do these? How's your day? What's going on? All right, so uh, today um, I'm trying something new. I try uh, some kind of uh, an intuitive reading kind of thing. I am going to use cards, but um, today it was kind of weird because all day while I was at work, I was getting downloads and stuff. And then, like, after I got the download, like, one of my, like, I listen to YouTube and I listen to different readers or whatever, too. You know what I'm saying? I was listening to this one reader and everything that I saw in my, in everything that, everything that was in my download, this person pretty much talked about. And not just this person, but it was, like, several other people. You know what I'm saying? So... But I'm still going to talk about it because you probably already heard it if you heard any other uh, readers by now. But so the download I got today, it was like um, I saw what I saw today was like um, it was like um, it was like somebody it was somebody having sex. Right. It was like two people or whatever having sex could have been more than two people, but they were having sex. Right. And. In the next room, there was like this kid, this little kid that was like, I don't know if they were watching TV or reading a book or writing in a book, but that's what they were doing. It was like, she was, it was like, it looked like a girl, but she it looked like she was laying on the floor and she was like reading her book and writing in her book and stuff like that. And there was, um, like someone else, like maybe the parents or, you know, somebody else having sex in a room next, like then the next room over, you know what I'm saying? Somebody having sex around the kids and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, um, there was uh, another download that I got and it had to do with the uh, owl totem. I don't know if you guys believe in uh, total anim animal totems or not. But there was this uh, owl totem that I saw. And uh, the owl totem basically is, uh, in an, is basically um, an initiate into the wisdom in, of the occult. You see what I'm saying? It's like an initiation into it, like a doorway. Or the way it was explained to me, it was like a, a doorway or a gateway to connect them with spirits and stuff like that, especially on the other side. Now... Um, I'm not saying, you know, go and get Ouija boards and all that shit and, uh, you know, try to connect with dead relatives and all of that stuff or angels and demons and shit. Because I don't want you to call me and be like, hey, I got possessed. <laughs> or, 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 uh, I felt a your advice and it wasn't good. I don't want to hear that shit, okay? And yeah, that's my nagging voice right there. So, yeah. Anyway, it was like, um, it was, um, it was crazy that I saw that shit. Cause, um, the owl is definitely, um, someone who looks like, like it's a nocturnal animal by being a nocturnal animal. It is well acquainted with the dark. It works well in the dark. It's unafraid of the occult or magic or, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Like stuff that most people get rattled by. Like you can go by somebody, you can go to somebody and say voodoo and the first thing in their mind, they think dolls and all that other shit. And all of a sudden it's like, you know, it scares the shit out of people. You know what I mean? Well, our animal totems isn't like that. It's like they are well acquainted with the darkness. They could be a, a being or an entity of light, but they are well acquainted with the darkness. And the darkness doesn't frighten them because they have an understanding of what they're looking at. The unknown is what is scientifically proven that people fear the unknown, okay? That is where this owl energy gets their strength from because they are brave enough to face the unknown or dwell in the unknown without anxiety. You see what I'm saying? You got it. You get it. <laughs> I'm not talking to nobody on a short bus, so I know you guys get it. <laughs> anyway... Um, there also, there, another animal that I saw was the rabbit animal totem. I had to look this one up too. Um, the rabbit animal totem had to do with, um, basically high energy 
Um, it's not necessarily an anxiety, but it's somebody who intuitively feel their way around. They move at a fast pace. They go from project to project. They are being warned to look before you leave. Do your research before you make a major move or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because um, the owl, the vibe that I also got off that vibe, off that owl was like a spiritual warfare. You know what I'm saying? And basically what I'm getting, what I got when you combine it too is like, you know, there is some kind of spiritual or cult oriented warfare headed our way. And um, maybe initially we may not understand what, what's going on or whatever, or it may be the you know, same person that's coming at you again. But it's telling you to uh, trust your intuition, especially with the rabbit tunnel. Trust your intuition. Also, you might want to look up the owl animal totem and the rabbit animal totem. Come to your own conclusion as you apply it to what, um, as you apply it maybe to this reading or whatever other readings you get today. All right. All right. Let's go. You know the drill. You don't think of a situation. You can think about this situation or whatever situation you want to. But it is fuck it time. <laughs> it is fuck it time. All right. You ready? All right. Ready or not? Fuck it. I'm pulling a card. And the answer is, a group of fuckers can help you achieve success. <laughs> so, if you ain't got no fuckers around you, you better get you some motherfuckers or some fuckers so you guys can achieve success together. All right. Yeah, let me put those up. Okay. Uh, now that that's been said, that's been done, um... Yeah, let's get into a reading today. I'm going to take a different kind of approach to this reading here. Uh, I got a new deck that I want to try out. Um, I got a new deck that I want to try out today. When I saw this deck, I was like, man, that that's, I mean, something like that. Because the thing is, is like, you know, when you use your, like, tarot cards or whatever, everything has a set, big, you know, mostly everything is set already, okay? But these right here, it leaves it up to your interpretation a little bit, based off of what you see and what you know. And also, of course, it has to connect it to uh, Native American that, you see what I'm saying? Ooh, look like we got one card there, okay. All right, so angels and spirit guides. I don't even ask for them. Um, angels and spirit guides. Reveal to us what we need to know at this current time for those that are under spiritual attack or spiritual warfare. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's that. I can scatter you to die for and relay the message. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. This is gonna be the message right here. Maybe there's more than one, okay? The first message that we got, actually, I'm gonna I'm pull out all three. Okay, so uh, right here we have uh, the Wailing Tree, Reconciliation. We got 35, the Lost Compass getting back to integrity. And then we have the uh, metox, okay? So basically when you have uh, this card here, the wailing tree, this has to do with um, being trapped in a situation where it's like you're rooted in some kind of bitterness. You're, you're, there's some kind of bitterness at your roots or someone else's roots. Uh, it could have been a, a past relationship, could be a friendship, could be a business partner. Basically, this card is letting you know that something from the past is on its way back, okay? And there is the opportunity to reconcile in this situation. Now, one reader had put this in perspective so clear for me that hopefully she doesn't get, me, get mad at me uh, giving you guys the same advice. Um, I can't think of her name right now. 
It was um, is it? it was something tarot. I can't remember what what it was, but she put something in perspective for me, and it helped me when it comes to reconciliation. Okay, and basically, it's like um, when you hold on to grudges and you call yourself trying to get someone back. True enough, it's within your karmic right to get someone back, but there's only so much you can do. You see what I'm saying? You can only cause so much pain or so much devastation to the person. You see what I'm saying? And nine times out of 10, you causing that devastation will cause you to walk away from your abundance or whatever you have going on to go do something to someone else when you can take that same energy and just move on. Now, what this person is saying now, she said that um, when it comes to revenge, it's best to just turn it over to God. Just turn it over to God because once you turn it over to the universe, what is just the just due or the full balance of that karma will be executed. You see what I'm saying? So say like they stole $50 from you and, you know, uh, they act like they got away. You could go and steal the money back from them, but there's a chance you might get arrested or you might steal it from them and turn around and have to pay some kind of uh, unexpected bill with it. You see what I'm saying? Now you don't have it and they don't have it either. You see what I'm saying? But if you turn it over to the universe, you may end up getting a raise and they may end up losing their jobs. You see what I'm saying? So this is a this is a reconciliation here, okay? Someone from the past is coming to you to uh, for reconciliation. Indeed, this is both a trick, a trap, and a test, okay? It's a trick, it's a trap, and it's a test. And I'm gonna let you know why. This person is only coming to be coming back to reconcile in order to try to get back into your good graces. OK, the test here indeed in is to forgive, but not to forget. Don't forget what they did. You can forgive them, but you don't. But don't forget and don't let them back into your energy. Don't let them get back close to you because there's a chance that that person could do that again. You know, in your life, depending on who it is and what happened. You know, you're an adult. You can decide what you want to do or not. But I'm just letting you know that it is a test and it'll let you know where you are spiritually. If you forgive them, that's going to rank you higher on the um, on the um, you get a higher rank for forgiveness. OK, and forgetting. You know what I'm saying? You're not forgetting that it happened. You're just forgetting that. Uh, well, let's see. You're not you're not forgetting that it happened. You're just forgetting about it and moving on with your life. You forgave them and just forget about it. You see what I'm saying? But that's not saying like, you know, uh, I forget about it as in uh, playing, you know, playing dumb or saying it never happened at all. No, it did happen. Okay. Now, next we have this uh, lost compass. Okay. With the, with the lost compass, it's about uh, getting back to integrity. So this is coming back to your center here. Okay. Because true enough, this person right here could have hurt you, damaged you in some kind of way. And there may be some kind of reconciliation that uh, this person is wanting with you. And it's for a reason, because this person is probably going through some kind of tough karma, right? But in the same breath, that pain, you probably have not recovered from it quite yet, or you're trying to recover, or whatever it may be, wherever you are on your healing journey. But look, this is saying, this is your lost compass right here. You need to find your way back to who you used to be and what you used to be and what you stand for. You got to ask yourself the tough questions now, okay, to get back to where you used to be or get back to uh, in, get back in your own good graces. You know what I'm saying? Because this situation that you were just in and that you just got out of, it's really easy for someone to uh, lose themselves, to uh, give up, to uh, give up on certain things in their lives to walk away from love, to walk away from friends, family, whatever it may be. It's a really difficult test, but it left you lost. You know what I'm saying? It could have been mentally lost or dead disarray, emotionally lost, spiritually lost, whatever it may be, but you're being called to find your integrity, to get back to your integrity. The things that you hold dear, the things that matters to you, your morals, your values, what you really stand for, how you, you know, the uh, true essence of your life, and the true essence of your being. And no, you're not expected to know this off rip. That's why the me tox is here. 
And this me talks, you see somebody is, um, this is a person who's actually, uh, well, it's a mer woman. <laughs> it's definitely a mer woman in a tub, in a sea. Those things don't add up. But, uh, yeah, this person is, uh, bathing in, uh, in a tub. This is like a, um, they made a ritual of detoxing all the things that no longer serve them in their life. Okay, when you inhale, when you exhale, you release energy. Okay, when you inhale, you draw energy, certain energies in. When you hold it, you make it your own. And then when you exhale, you release. Okay, that's why this person is uh, breathing. You know, you see their lips perched together like it is. It's because they're blowing away all their problems and troubles, all the things that uh, hurt them. Everything that uh, this person would need reconciliation for or you might need reconciliation for, all the things that uh, was involved in this person being lost. All the things that was involved in this person being lost, that's what this person is detoxing from. They're making a ritual of my, of my personal space time. When you have your own personal space, you can tap back into being your own kid, you know what I'm saying? Basically, you're repairing the mind, the body, and the soul, okay? Wait, okay, yeah, say that on there, okay? So you might be called to me talks, you know what I'm saying? Spiritual baths, if you, you know, fellas, go to the gun range, go work out, exercise, um, you know, whatever, whatever it takes to, you know, have your own special time, play the game, whatever it may be, just to get your mind off of stuff that you've been dealing with and to put things in perspective. Don't play the video game and just be caught in it for hours. But, you know, if it's gonna, if that's the thing that gives you perspective in your life or like, damn, like, you know, I need to change this about my life or whatever, or I need to do this or I need to do that, then yeah, go ahead, do that. But this that me talks is all about uh self is about reflection you want to reflect on what no longer serves you because that's just like if you had to clean your house okay you want to think about the things that you want to get rid of especially like spring cleaning there's certain things that you want to get rid of okay there's certain things that you don't want to hold on to anymore the longer you hold on to that baggage the longer the more it clutters and stops other things from coming into your life Okay, and that's what this metox is for. You're cleansing yourself of it. You're you're just letting it go. You don't understand. I mean, you know, you don't need to know how it's going to solve itself in certain circumstances. Some of the stuff that you're letting go, you don't need to know all the details of how it's going to be solved or how this karma is going to work out or how certain things are going to work out. That's not important when you have when you detox or metox. Okay, the most important thing is that you see it for what it is. You're not anxious about it. You're not depressed about it. You're reaching out to your spirit guides. You're reaching out to your angels. You're reaching out to God and you're just having a personal conversation with them. As you're not doing like, a, you know, any special prayers or anything like that. You're just talking to whoever you believe in or whatever you believe in. Person, you know what I'm saying? As if they are in the room with you. You know what I'm saying? And when you get out of this bath or when, like, say if it is a bath that you do, when you get out of this bath, you leave all your troubles there. OK, you leave all your troubles there. Don't carry them back out with you. OK, once you discuss it, once you put out your concerns to the universe, walk away from that shit and leave it the fuck alone. You know why? Because the answer is going to come to you. Answers don't universal answers don't come to you by, you know, just they don't come to you by. um you focusing on it and being, you know, dwelling on it and shit like that. No, no. You just have to let God resonate. You have to let the universe tell you what it needs to tell you, especially when it comes to bettering yourself. Okay, so the next set that I have here, I, I like this actually. I like this card deck, man. I really like it. <laughs> you got uh, the covenant here, a sacred contract. You got the hollow bone, teachability. And you got dust devil, moving out of stagnation here. Uh, hollow bone. 
the vibe that I get here is that something is over here, okay? Something is definitely over here. This, there's a cycle. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've, I've been preaching this for the longest about a cycle being over. But this right here, this hollow bone, it says teachability. Then you have the dust devil that says moving out of stagnation. And you have covenant, sacred contract, okay? When I see this here, this uh, sacred, this uh, hollow bone, the first thing I think about is timing, the timing of things. Because this hollowed out bone is a uh, flute. It's like a, uh, it's a musical instrument, right? So with this musical instrument, everything is timed out. Everything has uh, energy, frequency, and vibration are all in one accord. You know what I'm saying? In order to make a, a, a noise, a music, or to uh, make sound, to produce something, to create something. And this is where teachability comes in. Like, you have to make yourself teachable. You have to be like this flute here. You have to be accept, You have to be receptive to the universal winds blowing through you, playing its music for others to hear. Okay? Oh, I like that. You have to, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's why you have different feathers up here. These feathers are, you know, basically prayers, different prayers and petitions and things that you sent up into the universe here. You know, and this here, this is the moose. The moose is sacred in the, um, the, sac the moose is a, a, a sacred energy in a Native American deck. Uh, I believe it's affiliated with uh, masculine energy and uh, mobility, but, uh, and um, being like uh, 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 territorial, they're territorial animals, if I'm not mistaken. But the same as you could say about your deity or whoever you believe in, God or whatever, um, they are wishing to use you to blow, you know what I'm saying? To not blow you, but <laughs> no, no, they're not trying to blow you, but they're trying to use you like a flute. I don't know if you, um, if you ever listened to, um, Jay-Z's, uh, song, uh, um, with, uh, who's that? Not, not Bob Marley, but, uh. It was one of the Marley boys. I can't think of their name right now. I really can't think of their name. But anyway, in the song, he was like, you know, we artists are like whistles. You know what I'm saying? We just telling our story and the wind, like the message just comes through them like a whistle. You know what I'm saying? It's the same with this right here. You're being asked to uh, make yourself receptive to or to be an instrument or to be receptive to what the most high has for you so that they can, so that the most high can use you. You know what I'm saying? To express itself into this world. Here you have the dust devil here moving out of stagnation. So this is definitely a good thing right here. Like um, this dust devil give me the vibe of somebody who was confused or had a lot of things going on. There's a lot of dark energy around, hence dust devil. You could have been fighting with someone in negative energy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Look at this. There's a des it's a desolate place. Nothing is growing there. There's no trees. It's not fruitful. Nothing is nothing. All the resources in where you are or where you were are dried up. There's nothing here for you to sustain yourself, to make a living or to live and thrive like this, uh, like uh, the most high envisioned you as according to this last card, the hollow bone, okay? Everything is dried up. There's nothing here but optimism. And that optimism, is optimism is good, but too, optimism, too, too strong of optimism could burn things up. It could destroy things in your life. It could destroy uh, your ability to do, uh, receive opportunities or act on opportunities. But not enough optimism, it, you know, could make your heart cold or distant. You see what I'm saying? So you have to find that perfect blend of optimism so that you can take action. Now is the time for you to uh, take action because this, um, you're being called to move out of stagnation to make your move. Because whatever covenant or contract that you were involved in, it was up. Like say if you was uh, in a karmic contract, there was some karmic that, you know, you probably did something to somebody or 
or uh, this is a part of a, con a sacred contract that God, you know, may have uh, had agreed with you upon before you incarnated or whatever it may be. Um, there are more than likely it's like some hard, desolate time. That contract is over. The Lord is calling you out of Lodabar here. I don't know if you ever heard about uh, that story about God calling uh, that guy out of Lodabar. I can't remember the whole story, but this is what happened. There was a, a, a guy who worked as a farm hand. He was, everybody thought he was poor. He was a poor man, right? Well, come to find out his father was a king and the king, and if they were going to find the hair of the king, to pass down uh, what was, you know, what was, you know, theirs. So they sent this man. I mean, they sent the messenger to a place called Lodabar. There was a man there who was working on a farm and he was real poor. He had a simple lifestyle. He lived with people and stuff like that. And he was called to call this man out of Lodabar to come and receive what God had in store for him. That was the end of his contract as a man who was working that farm hand. You see what I'm saying? He was called out of that. He was being called out of stagnation here. He was called into his destiny. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord is, you know, God is saying, you know, basically you're being called to come out of Lodabar and to return to your throne if you are not on your throne. Well, kiss my ass. Look what we got here. We got a. What the hell is that? Look at this shit right here. We got a. <laughs> we got a. We got a shape. I'm gonna call it a shape shifter, okay? But I don't know what the fuck that little monkey, little monkey bird. <laughs> it's like a monkey bird. First of all, I thought it was an owl. I thought say, oh okay, the owl came up. No, that's a fucking monkey bird. I don't know what the fuck that is. It look like that shit off the of fucking Wizard of Oz, don't it? <laughs> anyway, you got uh, you got the dream thief here. Uh, refusal to the call. You got the empty well here. Time to replenish. And you got another bird card here. Eyes of the eagle. Rising above the fray. Okay. So with this chimera or uh, this... Uh, Chupacabra. <laughs> this is called the dream thief here. Refusal of the call. Basically, there's someone in your life that doesn't want you to uh, acquire what God has for you, okay? This is called the dream thief. The dream thief is someone who would um, try to manipulate you in any kind of way or keep you distracted in any kind of way that they can to uh, keep you from acquiring something that they cannot acquire because it's going to take you somewhere that they cannot go. And it is known, okay? It's known. Where you're going, everybody cannot go. So what do they do? This person is the dream thief. The dream thief job is to disguise itself as something you would think of as uh, maybe a something subtle to get close to you. But in order, but uh, overall, its goal is to smash your dreams. You might have dreams of starting a restaurant, hair, slime, whatever it may be. This dream thief may enter into your life and say, man, it's a lot of them that get closed down. I don't know how you're going to do it. Or I don't know this, or I don't know that. Or they'll try to even sabotage you or still even try to steal your idea and do it before you so it make it look like you copying after them. Trust me, I'm dealing with a motherfucker like that right now. Nizal. <laughs> like, this dream thief is some real shit in my life. And I'm going to give you a real example. Like, this is... Um, I'm going to let them stay anonymous, but it's a motherfucker who um, is really miserable about their life. Like nothing, like they, this person is being compared, their life is being compared to mine, okay? Or me and this person is being compared, okay? By someone I don't even want. Someone that, like, to be honest, I'll... I'll just put it like this. I, I don't want this person at all, okay? This person can, whoever, this other person, they can have, you know, it's all yours. I ain't even looking at, you know, this person went, okay? But because of that, that is what is making this other person desire me so bad, okay? 
and they're continuing to try to compare. And now you got this dream thief here. This person, you know, they'll try like a dream thief. They'll try to imitate you. They'll uh, do mischievous shit in your life. They'll um, some of them do spell work. Some of them do. Um, they'll do spell work on you and you know uh, your family, on your friends, on your businesses, uh, your cars, the cat, the dog. They don't give a fuck. They will do anything they can to keep you from being better than them. When in reality, you woke up like this, right? Right? You woke up like this. <clears throat> you you are just being you. You By you being you, you intimidate this person. Because this person is very insecure. And like in my circumstance, this person is it's a real, it's a real insecure person. You know what I'm saying? Real insecure. Like, they're not comfortable being in their own skin. You know what I'm saying? So... But I can't judge this person because at one point in my life, I was insecure too. You see what I'm saying? I didn't like being insecure, so what did I do? I, I grew a pair of balls. What can I say, right? That's what you do. You don't like being weak, you go to the gym and you get stronger. Anyway, that dream thief, that's what they do. They uh, try to creep into your life. They'll try to be friends with you. They'll try to, uh, like... I don't know if you saw the other video about um, uh, that I was talking about how I like to, um, you know, basically I'm a loner. I like being alone. I don't like incorporating into groups because that shit is messy. It don't matter who it is. It's, it's always messy business in a group because the way I see it is like when you in, when you running with a crew in order for them to stick together, if when there's when you don't have shit in common. In order for y'all to stick together, you have to have a common goal or a common person that y'all hate. You see what I'm saying? And people will hate that person. Like, if it's hate, people will hate a person they don't even know or don't even have the facts about, never even met, in order to fit into this group. To get what? Gossip. Drama. You know what I'm saying? They'll do that. You know? But it's a distraction from what's really going on in their lives. Okay. Next, uh, we have the uh, the well, the empty well. Time to replenish. Now, in the I Ching, the empty the well, which is uh, number forty eight, <clears throat> it's all about providing sustenance because at the bottom of the well is water, right? Water is a sus is a sus is a necessity in life. Like without water, a person can die. I mean, you know, people die. Or, you know what I'm saying? People can get sick or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's only so long you can go without water, okay? That's why in Christianity, God is compared to water. Because when you are like the water, you cleanse yourself with water. You purge yourself with water. You, uh, you drink water to sustain yourself. You drink water to keep yourself thriving. You are water. You are 66 to 71% water. The earth is two thirds water. What we breathe technically is water. H2O, I mean, uh, there are hydrogen atoms in the air that we still breathe. Like, you know, so technically, water. You know what I'm saying? So, if I had to translate that for this card, I would translate it in a different way. Although God is the sustenance for life and his well is, you know, important. What if the water that we drink is actually knowledge? Because once we acquire this water, there's no way for us to give that water back unless we defecate it out. Right. Or unless we release it from ourselves. Right. So that's the same thing as knowledge or uh, knowledge or information or whatever. This well is our deep sense of knowledge and knowing. When you tap into this well of deep knowledge and knowing, your inner knowing, you rid yourself of the things that doesn't apply in that situation. You see what I'm saying? That's why water is very important and why is why water is affiliated with experience. Okay? Emotions and experience are affiliated with the element of water for a reason. You see what I'm saying? Well, 
this empty well here, it's time for you to replenish it. It's time for you to get your courage back. Time for you to get your oomph back. It's time to, you, you know, reclaim your power. It's time for you to quench that thirst in your soul. You see what I'm saying? It's time for you to quench that thirst in your soul. That thirst for not necessarily just knowledge, but that thirst for moving on. That thirst for releasing. That thirst that... That, you know, you might have a thirst for something. You don't know what it is. Maybe it's that forgiveness you need to do. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you need to forgive somebody and that'll quench that thirst. Maybe it's you need more information about something about your life. Or you need to release something from your childhood to quench that thirst. Maybe it's, um, you know, it could be a variety of things. But, you know, you are on empty right now. Your life source, the well, the water in the well is empty. It's empty. It's low. It's time to recharge yourself. That's why we had that Metox card come up here. We had the Metox card come up here. That lost compass. It takes a lot of energy. Like when you get lost, there's a, you, you put a lot of energy into finding yourself or trying to navigate when you're lost. Okay? When there's reconciliations to be had, especially after a tough time. Yeah. A lot of this stuff causes a lot of energy. Stagnation. Stagnation, stagnant energy is very, you know what I'm saying? That's why I pray to God, release all stagnant energies in your life so that you may move forward in love, peace, and light. You see what I'm saying? Because look at here. You got the eyes of an eagle here, rising above the fray. And this is what God is asking you to do. That's why that hollow bone came out like it did. You see what I'm saying? You got to rise above this dream thief here. You got to believe in yourself when nobody else believes in you. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I keep saying I know what I'm saying, but I had to make sure that you know what I'm saying. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Just one second. Hold on. Yeah, like uh, you need to um, like got the eyes of the eagle. Now, when you have the eyes of an eagle, what this actually means is that uh, you have to soar above the situation. You have to take a, you know, when you metox, you detach from yourself and you absorb observe everything that's going on from a bird's eye view. The eagle. Like the reason look, these two cards here are connected right here. The Metox card and the eyes of the eagle, they're connected. The connection here is that with the eyes of the eagle, you have to um, detach from yourself. You have to soar high, okay? You have to uh, zoom out. You have to see the big picture of everything, okay? You have to understand the agenda. You have to evaluate the agenda of this dream thief here. Evaluate the agenda. Evaluate the stagnation and what's been keeping you stagnated. Evaluate what's been leaving you empty. That, that source of water. What is draining your water out? You see what I'm saying? And I have another analogy for this water. I'm going I'm to get back to you in just a second. But matter of fact, let's do it now since I'm thinking about it. In Walden, there was this book called Walden, right? And it was um, this teacher on YouTube. If you ever get a chance, make sure you YouTube uh, Walden Lecture, okay? I can't remember the guy's name, but he was talking about, he said, when you wake up in the morning, imagine that when you start, you have like this jug of energy, okay? Well, okay, well, uh, Lord, this is gonna take a minute. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so in the book of Walden, basically, it went like this. It broke down to, uh, so, you know, Henry David Thoreau went out into the wilderness to live alone to, uh, you know, evaluate his life because he wanted to live purposely, okay? That was the goal to evaluate per what he needed to live purposely. He wanted to live a life on purpose, okay? And... He realized that he was there were two different kind of problems that he spent so much time dwelling on. 
problems that like uh, problems that he has control over and problems he don't have control over. Okay. So the way that this teacher breaks this down is saying like, okay, say that you wake up in the morning with a jug of water. Now, every time you put your energy into something, it's like someone's taking an ice pick and stabbing that jug of water and releasing some of that water. And then at the end of the day, you wonder why you're so drained or why you don't have that much energy left is because you look at all these holes that are in your jug that's you know, drained out all your water. And that's exactly what this is right here, okay? But the two things that'll stab a hole in your energy, if you let it, is things you have control over and things you don't have control over. If you don't have control over it, why let it drain your energy? You see what I'm saying? You don't have control over it, so why put your energy into it? You know what I'm saying? Like revenge and getting somebody back, you don't have, you don't have control if it work out or not. You don't have control over that. You don't have control over somebody trying to, you know, irritate you or try to steal, you know, what's yours. Because what's yours is yours. You don't have no control about over somebody who's trying. You see what I'm saying? But you also have those problems that you do have control over. And if it you do have control over it, why not get control over it? You see what I'm saying? So anyway, that is why your well is empty because you were probably stressing yourself over something you don't have your, any control over. Or you were trying to get control over something you don't have control over. And that leads to this stagnation card here. You know what I'm saying? Now back to the eagle card, like I was saying, you have to take a bird's eye view and, over, and uh, overview all of it and see what it is that you are stressing yourself over that you have control over and that you don't have control over. You see what I'm saying? Take a bird eyes view of that and be honest with yourself. The reason why this eagle is so, it was connected to the uh, Metox card is because this eagle is the king of the birds, okay? This is a very powerful animal totem in the Native American deck. This is, probably, this is the strongest bird in this deck, okay? And the reason being is that this one is the king of birds because it flies higher than all the other birds, okay? The higher you fly, the better vision you should have over the entire terrain over the entire situation. And that's what you're being called to do, to rise above this. You know, step outside of yourself for a minute. Put your pride aside. Put what you believe to be true aside for a moment and observe what's going on, what, how it's making you feel, how it's draining you, if you have control over it, what you have control over and what you don't have control over. As you are soaring high to get a bird's eye view of everything, you're connecting, you soaring high is like connecting with God, okay? And when you connect to God, that is a part of your Metox card. You see what I'm saying? That was what I was talking about. Like, this person happened to be in a bathtub. This person is soaring high like an eagle because they're having that me time with God or with their deity or whoever they believe. And they're telling them, they're communicating directly to them as if they are a person with them. You know what I'm saying? And once you connect it with God or whatever, you, you know, turn back to this eagle and you come back to the earth. Because in reality, this eagle can fly as high as he wants. But one, he gets tired of flying that high all the time. And then two, what he needs to sustain himself in life is also on the ground. So he must come back to the earth or come back and reground himself. He has to come to reality. And that's why this Metox card, I was telling you. Once you connect with God, you leave those problems there and come back to reality. You see what I'm saying? I know that was a lot, but <laughs> like, man, I should be a teacher, man. Like, honestly, I think I could do a lecture about some of this shit, man. And maybe that's what all of this is gearing towards, like me doing lectures and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what y'all think. Y'all think I should do a lecture? Yeah, I think I should do it. I think I should try a lecture. I think I have a lot of fun, you know what I'm saying, during the lecture. Okay, so let's see who you can connect with to help you and assist you in this um in this trying time because it's apparent you need divine intervention, but you also need someone like you need someone to connect to that understands your situation or excels at the situation that you're dealing with, okay? 
So, most high gods and ascended masters, I call out to you and I ask you to reveal unto us the ascended masters that me, I mean, that the collective needs to connect with in order to free themselves from the stagnation. Amen. Okay, I'm going to pull a three, just like normal. So these three guides here, I don't, I, I'm going to have to read the book on them because, yeah, this is a new deck here. But um, I'm going to, uh, we're going to check out and see who can help you with this. Okay, first of all, we got Krishna. Krishna, trust your spiritual guidance. Your commitment has been recognized. You are loved unconditionally. I don't know much about Krishna at all. I'm going to be honest with you, 100% honest. As much as I read shit, I don't know anything about them. Okay. Krishna is a Hindu god who is known uh, as Mahavatar, great avatar, and embodies divine wisdom, one of India's best loved gods. He is an approachable, kind, loving, and supportive guy. He is a peaceful being with a great love for all people and animals. He is often depicted with a, with a calf or a lamb, which is a symbol of innocence, and a peacock feather on his head, which is said to honor divine feminine, okay? You have a deep spiritual connection and must trust the guidance that is coming through. So whoever, okay, so basically you need to uh, reconnect with your, uh, you know, you could be divine feminine, uh, but you need to uh, connect with your deep wisdom, okay? But in order to do that, you need to recharge first. You got a lot of shit going on around you. You need to recharge. Okay, the next person here. Look at that. Isis, all right, okay. Magic manifesting. Your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused, okay? The re okay, I know a little bit about Isis because I, I'm a thought, I'm a thought, uh, thought kind of person, okay? Now, Isis was uh, a very ex, she was, like, her medicine was par none, right? Like, her medicine brought people back to life, it uh, revigorated people, it, it's, her magic is the shit, okay? Especially in Egypt, okay? Very powerful woman, very powerful sorceress, very powerful high priestess, okay? Now, for her to come through, she's letting you know that, that you are manifesting things, okay? But by you being empty and the stagnant energy and this negativity around you and the discord, like you're manifesting, you are bringing these things also in your reality. So you are part to blame for what's going on here, okay? But the dreams and things that you envision for your life, the things that are good that you envision for your life, it's coming. There may be like a small delay, a small setback uh, that dream thief might you know might be up to no good like always you know what i'm saying but it's coming and that's what you that's the mind frame that you have to be in like you know it's coming it's coming isis is strong smart focused egyptian winged goddess according to the legend she was able to move from darkness to light and between the underworld heaven and earth for that reason whenever she whenever she comes to us she will help us move from the hell of our own fear into the heaven of our own love. And here it is. Yep, she re she revived uh, her lover um, Osiris. So it's a uh, let's see. Um, yeah, she was able to revive her lover Osiris from the dead, and, and this powerful allegorical story shows how. She can help us revive an aspect of our life or a dream that we may have killed off with fear or lack of self-belief. With her magical abilities, Isis will guide us to bring our dreams into reality. So basically, you are moving into a space where your dream reality is becoming your outward reality. Yep. Whatever you, whatever dreams that you, you know, whatever you've been dreaming of, that's why you have this dream thief here. This dream thief is trying to manipulate you into thinking negative or believing negative about yourself so that you will manifest negativity. But in the name of Jesus, it's not going to work because, you know, like I said on this channel, we bind those that try to bind us to negativity in any way, shape or form. You know what I'm saying? 
And that's through Archangel Michael by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them bindings. And, you know, all that stuff that this person is doing is for nothing. See, this person is coming in so many different forms. They're tiring themselves out. They are overexerting themselves. They don't know what form to take, so they're trying to take all forms at once. And that right there is against the cosmic law. There will be a price to pay for that, a heavy price in which this person could possibly become possessed because they're going to leave their body to try to... Um, the, uh, the way I see it is like they're going to leave their body to try to do some dream thief shit because they're like shape-shifting into all these energies. And not just them, but somebody else that they're, that's helping them too. And what's gonna happen is when they come back to their body, something else is gonna be in that body and that's gonna be for the rest of their life. And it's not something like, you know, hearing a voice, it's more like a, it's something a little darker than that. You see what I'm saying? It's dark, way darker than that. And that's for uh, violating a cosmic law, a cosmic law. Like the law that this person is trying to violate goes higher than, um, the third, the 3D, it goes higher than a 3D and possibly um, something like a 7D possibly. 6D or 7D possibly, they're trying to go over. But anyway, yep, you got that. Now let's see what else. Now we have the last one. This is Gaia, reconnecting with the Earth, okay? Earth connection, be mindful of the planet, come back to Earth, stay grounded. Okay, so you've been called to do grounding exercises, especially in um, nature. Best to get out in nature and uh, reconnect with the most, I mean, and reconnect with the spirit of the earth. The earth has a frequency of uh, a night, like a, a, a frequency that has a tendency of grounding out other energies. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's good to go for a hike, go for a walk. Um, walk bare, being barefooted helps. Um, like, you know, it's, it's a variety of different things that you can do to uh, reconnect with that, uh, with the Mother Earth here. And that's what you're being called to do, because like I said, with this Eagle card here, you're going to have to come back to reality anyway. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, you might as well reconnect with Gaia Earth. And I guess the last thing I should do with these three cards is to put them all in perspective. Uh, be more devoted to your uh, manifestations and uh, especially when you're uh, manifesting in a straightforward pattern. Manifest in a straightforward pattern, okay? And think love and light and ground yourself as often as possible. Cleanse yourself and ground yourself as often as possible. Okay, so how was that? That wasn't too bad, was it? Like, I like these new cards I bought. I um, saw them and I was like, you know what? I don't have any cards about this. I don't have any cards about that. But most importantly, like, I was looking for something that wasn't, like, concrete. Because, like, the, with the tarot, like, sometimes I, like, you know, like I said, I was uh, learning how to read them. It's a struggle for me because uh, it's like... It's a lot of literal meanings. Some of them have literal meanings and some of them have um, like uh, you can kind of like uh, listen and you know what I'm saying? Whatever, you know, you can kind of like uh, not necessarily guess, but you can um, pretty much fill out. You have to fill it out, like fill out, you know, what the interpretation of that is. You see what I'm saying? But, um, you know. I got to the point where I was kind of struggling putting it all into context and saying, you know, certain stuff, you know. So I figured my best bet was the Oracle cards where it's like there's a little bit of information, but there is more like pictures to go with it. The pictures are easier for me than to uh, the pictures are easier for me because they the pictures trigger different information that I know or that I've read about before. Is that what I'm saying? So we have that, um, let's see, what else we got here? Let's find out what this person is doing, this uh, dream thief. I should have clarified that. That's another thing I need to start clarifying shit. You know what I'm saying? But, okay, angels and spirit guys, clarify what this uh, dream thief is trying to hide. 
careful if you drink these, they're trying to uh, it's more than one. Okay, I'm gonna pull about uh, some of the seven, seven cards, but I'm gonna pull five cards. We're gonna find five truths about this person. And on top of that, we're gonna uh, get some hidden truth cards going. I haven't used these in a minute. So you can get an explanation of each one. We're gonna get a hidden truth for each one. Yeah, these busted ass cards. I mean, instead of getting another card, I should have got more. Should have got some uh, more of them cards. Okay, now let's check in the shadows, the things that they wanna say secretly or in the shadow. First card, the magic, let's see. We have downcast pride. So this has got to be somebody who's uh, very prideful, take pride in a lot of things, and it's, it's starting to bite them in the ass. It's coming back to bite this person in the ass, their pride, uh, very egotistical pride, envy, jealousy, greed, whatever. Yeah, that's the vibe that I get from this person. It's a deep-rooted, it's a deep-rooted, it's a deep-rooted uh, sin or uh, pride that they have too. It's deep rooted. This is something that's deep down in their core. It has ruined this person's life. As you can see, their roots are like, uh, you can see how dark and black and stuff by this person is like, um, and it's like they're transparent in a sense, but you can see the roots still there. That's the root of bitterness from pride. Let's see what hidden truth they have. I wish I could share my good news with you. So this person might, it's kind of like a person, like, you know, like I said, with a prideful thing, like your rep recognition of them is important to them for whatever reason. Let's see. I know more than you think. Yeah, it's like this is the kind of person that has to be the smartest person in the room, have to know everything, have to, uh, like, you know, you know how nosy bitches is, always want to be in somebody else's business but don't want to tell their own. Everybody know their business because it's like, this is somebody who uh, probably got a roach infestation right now. Shit. Also, you have revenge here. So you probably humiliated somebody. And, uh, you know, whoever this person is, but like, you know, if it's somebody separate, this like, there's some kind of revenge that this person wants on you. So you could have upset them. Look at this, you and I were too young. So this could have been from the past. I lied to you. Okay. You said, I don't give a shit if you lied to me. You lied. You lied to yourself. Shit. Fuck you. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see what else we got about this person. Or these could be five different people. You know what I'm saying? Like one person could be dealing with somebody who's very prideful. Another person could be dealing with somebody who uh, is looking out, is out for revenge on them. Uh, another dream thief here would be somebody who is bound by their anger. Anger and in chains. So this person is, there's somebody here who, uh, dream thief is very angry with them. It's like somebody who's very, like, malicious. Like, I get somebody like a husband that, like, jump or beat somebody or some shit or tell you that you're not good enough for certain shit, you know what I'm saying? I know I was a distraction from your pain. Yeah, that gave me narcissistic vibes right there. I don't need your approval. The fuck? We need to tell you shit about approving you. We don't want to approve you, you angry man, nasty motherfucker. <laughs> All right, so here go person number four. Oi. Person number four is kind of the child I was meant to be. So yeah, that's definitely envy too. This person wished that they were you. 
Uh, they don't want to live their own lives. This possibly to somebody who do, uh, who is suicidal, who uh, thinks about killing themselves or constantly depressed or always in that mentality that um, it should have been me. You know what I'm saying? Or why, why, why do I have to live this life? Why can't I do this? Why can't I that? You know what I'm saying? All the why. Nobody gives a shit. Look at this. I love you. Oh, so it looks like somebody is envious of you, but they love you at the same time. They're in love with you, but they don't trust you. <laughs> and maybe that's what it is. Like they love you, but they don't trust you. And you're living a life that they wish that they could live. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like the song I played earlier today by J. Cole. No such thing as a life that's better than yours. And that's exactly true. Exactly true. Now we got number five. This dream thief is blinded by pain, okay? So this comes back to be somebody who uh, was injured in the past or had a love situation that didn't end well. Uh, let me see. I'll replay your conversations over and over again. Yeah, this is somebody who's uh, trapped in the past. They Mentally, they're trapped. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's probably why they trying to be the dream thief right now. I was careless with you. So yeah, that's pretty much self-explanatory. All right, I mean, I guess that's all I got for the reading here. Uh, I guess I've had to do like a overall message for the reading. It was uh, prepare for spiritual warfare and to um, recharge yourself. Take the time to recharge yourself. You know, if you got to do a spiritual bath, do a spiritual bath. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, spiritual cleansing, whatever it may be. Um, if you are in spiritual warfare, you know, don't be afraid to rebuke back what the, what the uh, enemy has sent to you. Don't be afraid to rebuke it back. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, just say something like, you know, I return what, I return negative energy that was directed my way with love and light in the name of the Most High God. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, send that shit back. Don't hold on to it. That's not your energy to hold on to to begin with. I don't know if y'all feel like me, but lately it's been like, you know, it's a lot of energy that's been being sent my way where it's like, um, you know, I could tell, you know, what the person who was sending it my way is feeling. A lot of depression, a lot of crying, a lot of anger, a lot of uh, deceit, a lot of... Uh, a lot of being led astray, you know what I'm saying? A lot of betrayal energy. Like somebody has been like backstabbed and betrayed, you know what I'm saying? Like bad, you know? And uh, I don't know, there's nothing I can personally do about it. But, you know, just let it be because that's not my energy. Okay, here's the last one. All right, ancestors, what do you think about the dream thief. Sounds like a fucking nightmare. Good luck. <laughs> what? Yeah, way to go, fucking guards. Way to go. Way to go. All right. Um, oh, you know what? I don't know why this came up, but um, I used to have this teacher, right? And this is unrelated to the shit. You know, I just keep, I just keep getting this. Like, I, I just keep thinking about him all day and not in that kind of way, motherfuckers. You nasty motherfuckers, you. But, um, it was like, uh, he used to clear his throat all the time. He used to be like, ah, ah, like that, right? Like, he'd be talking like, yeah, three X plus Y is, ah, what? What is it? You know, he used to talk like that, right? So, uh, one day, uh, there was like, like these kids, it was like three or four of them, right? They all over different parts of the classroom. Like one is up front on the left side. One is in the middle. One is up front on the right. One is in the back. You know what I'm saying? So when every time the teacher would turn around, they're like, ah, like that, right? One of them like, ah, all you hear is, ah, 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 all over the classroom and shit, right? I don't know what was wrong with the teacher. He had some kind of medical condition where he do that, right? Man, he got to turning around real quick and shit, trying to catch the motherfucker. Then he just played it real smooth, right? He was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to catch this motherfucker. I ain't worried about it, right? 
Tell me why this one girl was like, Arr! like that for a long time. As soon as he turned around, she stopped. And he was like, ah. Uh. It was a dude. I'm just going to make up a name. I'm like, ah, right, Kevin, I'm going to call you. Like, I'm on the hall. I'm going to call your dad. Kevin was like, it wasn't me. He was like, ah, I'm, like I'm not going to go through this with you today. I'm on the hall. I said, what the hell? Man, we was in there in tears. <laughs> we was in tears, y'all. Oh, man. I just felt like I had to tell some kind of funny story and shit today. All right. I love y'all all. Take it easy. Peace. And, yeah, I do need to do um, another prayer for you guys, but it won't be in this video. All right. Good luck. Love and blessings. Peace.